Hey guys, Kate here from the Emerald Minecart, and welcome to another story time. Now, this story is about how, uh, or mostly, if you read the title, yeah, it's about. It's not one like it's not one of those stories where I say something like a fact about me. This one being me being a diabetic, because hold on, wait, crap. Uh, ironically enough, I have to check my pump, but uh, yeah, I'm a diabetic. If no one knew that. And you're probably wondering, is it because you ate too much candy and you got diabetes? No. Th no, I, that's not... Because believe it or not, but eating too much stuff that's bad for you actually isn't the only way to get diabetes, believe it or not. And if you're curious, type 1. So, anyways, you're probably wondering, how did I get diabetes? Well, it happened somewhere around when I was 2 or 3, where in... Where basically, somewhere, so where basically, I was trying to sleep, but I woke up having a hard time breathing. Now, ima imagine, like, trying to sleep, and then suddenly uh, you have a hard time breathing, or, like, something like that happened, that's what my mom told me, I don't, to be honest, I don't fully remember, but... I know my mom told me because she mostly remembers it because it was in the time where, like, my me I wasn't able to remember things that much. Which is weird because I can, on the one hand, I can remember shit for something I studied for a math test a few days ago. But then, on the other hand, I can remember something that happened five years ago or a decade ago. So, yeah, my memory works in very confusing ways. So, yeah. Anyways, it was discovered that, oh hey, I have diabetes because my basically... Basically, when my insides shut down, like the inside... Basically, like, the inside that pumps insulin in you, like, that one, that inside shut down, so... So, yeah, it just... It, it just decided to shut down, and then, boom, diabetic. So, yeah, I've been... I've been a diabetic for all... for basically most of my life, so... Yeah, like, I hope... Especially since here's Zeno. Like, something I do want to do in my future, with, especially if I have a lot of money, is be able to go to Australia to get this surgery for... Like, it's... And again, if you're curious about the inside that shut... Like, the inside that shut down, or if you don't know the inside that gives you insulin, it's the pancreas, which... Oh, God. Hold on. Yeah, my pump's going off again. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, my, it's, a, it's a pancreas that gives you insulin, and if that's just down, then you need a pump, so, which is something I've had. And I've actually been through a good amount of them, most likely, like, three or something. Which, that's another thing I will get onto, but let me explain why I would want to go to Australia. So, Australia basically has, like, this artificial pancreas thing, which, that is another word for a pump, but apparently this artificial pancreas actually goes inside of you, unlike most pumps, where, like, most pumps in America are mostly, like, outside of you and they're attached to a site on you, so... Yeah, so I would want to go to Australia to be able to get the surgery to have the artificial pancreas inside me, but here's the problem. Obviously, this would be expensive, because not only it would be like, because this is how it would be. A flight to Australia, I would have to pay for a flight to Australia, then I'd have to pay for the surgery, and then I'd have to pay the flight from Australia back to Georgia, and obviously Georgia and Australia are very far away from each other. And obviously, like the combination, the uh, the combination of the totals of having to pay for a flight to Aus from Georgia to Australia, having to pay for the surgery, and then having to pay for a flight to Australia from Australia back to Georgia. Yeah, obviously that's going to be a lot of money. That now or my that today me obviously I would not be able to pay that. I don't even have a bank account yet, or. I'm close to getting one, 
I just like I just need a few more dollars and then boom, bank account. And my parents, <laughs> yeah, no, they would not be able to pay for that either. If they tried to, we would be homeless. Actually, we'd be so homeless. We'd be so homeless. We wouldn't be able to afford a cardboard box to live in. That's how homeless we would get if my parents tried to pay for that shit. So yeah, that's one of the things I want to do in the future. Be able, like, if I do get a lot of money in the future, be able to go to Australia, get the surgery, and yeah, just hopefully not have to worry about things. Or hey, maybe somewhere in the future, somewhere in America, there might be a artificial pancreas invented where it's something that actually goes inside you. And you only need this like small device thing on your outside or something. I don't, like I don't, I don't know what the future holds, especially since quick thing. Wanting to look into the future is pointless, especially since, especially since even if you have a planned future, things are obviously going to change. So yeah. But anyways, to get back on track, now to talk about the amount of pumps I've been on. Now the first one was called a Animus. Wait, let me let me check that. Hold on. Uh, wait. Actually, on, on. Animus. Was it Animus or? Um. Yeah, it was called a yeah Animus. I, I was correct on that, thankfully. So yeah, it's uh the first now. If you do know, and the Animus sadly doesn't make pumps anymore, which is why I had to stop using them. So the first pump was this classic black one that I've had that I had all the way up until like somewhere in the near in the fifth grade. And I actually still have this pump, actually. It's in my memory box, so yeah. So like then like this was also before Animus like was shutting down. So yeah, so somewhere like after I stopped using this one, aka when it ran out, which is just my which is just my term of it would no longer work anymore. I got this, I got this kind of shiny, lightish blue one that I used to say, "Oh yeah, I got my diabetic pump enchanted." Which, if you're wondering, yes, I'm serious about that. I legitimately bragged that I had my pump enchanted with a Minecraft enchantment table. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, I bragged about that, because please note, this, this was back then when I was really into Minecraft. And when I say really into Minecraft, I mean like... Minecraft was the only stuff I drew. Sure, I would occasionally draw the original robots or FNAF stuff, but I most of the stuff I would draw is Minecraft. Now, that's not the case anymore. Sure, I still draw Minecraft stuff, but not at the same amount I did before. To be honest, I think younger me would be would be shocked to hear that I don't really draw Minecraft stuff that much. So, yeah, but still, it's just... It's just funny to think about. And then somewhere in like... 6? Yeah, somewhere around like... set. No, wait. 6, 7... Yeah, I'd say somewhere around like... Late 7th grade or early to mid 8th grade... I got this new pump, which was... I don't... I forgot the name of it, but it was this pump... From a different cr pump creator. Or company. I don't really remember it that much. But I do have interesting stories about it. Because it was... Because here's the thing. First time I got it on, I got the new pump. And then I also got this new sensor thing. Which basically removed the need of me having to prick my finger with a... With one of those stick things. So... Yeah, it was, yeah, I, I don't know, it was this weird sensor thing, so, yeah. Okay, so, anyways, like, the, like, the day after, and this is not a joke here, like, the day after, like, this was before my birthday, and then, like, on my birthday, me and my family went out to eat at one of those Japanese restaurants, or, yeah, one of those, not Japanese restaurants, like, Actually, it was Japanese thing, I don't know. It was one of those restaurants where, like, they basically cook the food in front of you, which, to be honest, 
really freaking amazing. If you ever, if you haven't gone to one of those places before, I highly recommend you do because it's freaking amazing. And also, you're missing out, so there's that. But yeah, but the, then the next day, like, my chest near my heart, where, like, where my heart was, was, like, hurting, and I felt like puking, so, like, I had to be taken to the hospital, hospital, and, like, it was discovered that, like, it, it was mostly just, like, I don't know if, like, my blood sugar was messing up, but, or some of my pump did, but, even if it probably wasn't by my pump, it, it did feel like it was something that was caused by my pump, so, yeah, I had to go to the hospital, thankfully, Thankfully, I'm okay. Thankfully, I was okay, because if I wasn't okay, obviously, I would not be here speaking right now, so, yeah. And also, if you know how it feels to spend the night in the hospital, you would know it's miserable, especially when, like, all, the, all these tubes are connected to you and you can't move around. This is especially horrible for those people, for that ex exact reason, because, like, I'm one of those people who obviously move around in the bed a lot, and obviously not being able to do that in fear of disconnecting something. Yeah, I was, uh, I was kind of miserable at that point, so, yeah. But thankfully, I only had to be there for a day and stay there for just one night, thankfully. So, yeah. Oh, thank God. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Now, now we want to talk about my sights. Now, here's the thing. Now, usually for a diabetic, like, they put a sight on, like, their side when they're first doing it. Well, here's the thing. Back then, it was not like that, because back then, my mom had the brilliant idea, idea, not idea, but idea of having my sight on my ass cheek. Yes, I'm serious. Well, it wasn't directly on my ass cheek, it was somewhere on my ass cheek. It would be swapped right or left, but eventually we had to do, like, on near the, st on the sides of the stomach, or on, somewhere on the stomach, because, like, the areas that I was doing, like, it, it was so, like, it literally, no joke, it became so numb that insulin was starting to not even go in. Yeah, that's how numb a certain part of my right and left ass cheek got. It got so numb, insulin could not go in. Okay, actually, it could, but not the amount I needed could go in. So, yeah. So yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's a little fun fact about me. I have a certain part of my right ass cheek and left ass cheek that are so numb that I don't feel anything there. Yeah, I I wish I was joking, but I'm not. So yeah, so I eventually switched to like the sides on my stomach, and I still do it today, so yeah, there's that. But now, let's get back to stories about this pump, so it's mostly just some, it's, it's mostly mixed memories, so. And then another thing, which this is a really, really annoying thing that this pump does. Did, which, this happened twice, but the first time, which is when I had to get it replaced with the same pump, but it was, it was fixed, I think, but basically, my pump decided to do something where it decided to not work, and you say, and you might think, oh, big deal then, well, no, not, oh, big deal then, because it did, when, when it did this, it decided to let out a sound that kind of sounds like a detonator. I wish I was joking! It made a sound that is very similar to a detonator, and the worst part was, I was in my school library when this was happening. Yeah, somewhere in 7th grade, this happened to me in a school library. And please note that, uh, because last time I checked, if you hear the sound of a detonator in your school, that is obviously a sign that you are in danger. So yeah, I was starting to freak out, and I didn't want people to think, Oh, this kid has explosives on him, he's a terrorist, da da da. I didn't want people to think that, because my pump was making sound, so I was like, freaking out. Thankfully, I was excused to the nurse, and like, I was freaking out, and was starting to cry. 
because this was back then when I was kind of a sensitive little shit, so... Actually, actually, well, actually, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, I don't, I don't really fully know. But yeah, my pump was going off, so yeah, I had to get it replaced. And then, then the second time it happened is actually somewhat more recent. So this was a few, this was a few months ago, and I was just on walk, and my pump did the same thing. And obviously, I was freaking out, because again, it, like... The sound it made legitimately resembled the sound of a freaking detonator, so... Yeah, of course I would be freaking out. Sorry, just, just had to get something. Yeah, but still, so, of course I'd be freaking out, so then I had to get it replaced with the same pump, but this one would be temporary, because I would later be getting a new pump, which is the one I still have, which is a tandem pump. So yeah, I had to wait, and wait, and wait, so yeah. Oh, and also, I should talk about my second sensor, which has recently re been replaced with my third one that I'm still trying to figure out stuff about, because, like, this new sensor I have, like, I literally just got it today, so... Or actually, didn't just get it today, I got, like, I literally just got this thing yesterday, and I literally just got this thing, like, attached to me, a few hours ago, so obviously I'm still learning things about it. So, yeah. So my original sensor, it connect, it was on an app that was connected to my phone. And here's the problem with it: it it let out this annoying alarm thing. And the worst part was, one of the worst thing, you could do nothing to make the alarm silent. Like even closing out the app would actually like not exiting the app but like fully closing it out would cause the alarm to go off like a second after you're finishing t checking your blood sugar with the sensor it's like and again there's no way to change the sound either so yeah it's just really annoying it was basically like that annoying child that always need needs attention even if they really freaking don't and, yes, my new sensor does require an app, but thankfully you can actually change the noises, which is a good thing, so that means I can change it to something somewhat quiet instead of something that sounds like the spawn of Satan. So, yeah, that's that's thankfully a good thing. Oh, yeah, man. Now back, now, back to my pump. So, the tandem pump, it's thankfully just... It's basically just another pump, but, you know, not annoying, and thankfully nothing has happened, Some, thankfully nothing bad has happened to me related to blood sugars and stuff, so, that's a plus. So, yeah. So now that, with that all, all that out of the way, there is one more thing that I need to talk about, which is how my, how my blood sugar reacts. Wait. Uh, hold on. Yeah, wait, let me... I need to do something. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I just have to... Ironically enough, I have to bolus myself for something. Of course, it doesn't want to do it. Uh, yeah, my pump's kind of confusing. But, yeah. So, uh, anyways, how my blood sugar reacts. Now, this also connects back to the pumps. Before I got the new one, like, whenever, obviously, when I got, my blood sugar got high, I felt thirsty, and whenever my blood sugar felt low, I felt hungry. It's basically kind of like a real, real life video game system. Of not a video game system, like you know, the video, actually, technically, one like you know, a video game system where it's like if the health bar is low, then you need food. It, well, it's mostly that part, Un but unlike this one, if it the blood sugar reads zero, well, that means I'm dead, and unlike a video game, I would not be able to respawn. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, so that's why whenever my blood sugar gets low, I just decide to eat a bunch of food because now. Whenever my blood sugar gets low and I eat some some things, it continues to go down, which is really really not fun, especially for someone who is trying to lose weight. 
So yeah, sometimes I kind of think about starving myself. Okay, not not really, but like sometimes I just want to force myself to not eat something because like I am kind of trying to lose weight. So yeah, oh god. But then ever since I got this like had the pump before the tandem one, like whenever like I would get shaky or not shaky whenever i would get low i would not only feel shaky i would also feel dizzy and if i got really low then my eyesight would start to slowly get blurry which that's not a joke either like my blood sugar was like hitting 45 and like my eyesight legitimately was getting somewhat blurry so yeah of course younger me would be or not younger me. So, of course, me in that situation would be freaking out. So, yeah. Now, all of this... Now, all from what I've said. Has my... Has my 10-plus experience of being a diabetic been miserable? Um, there have been some moments, but to be honest, it's been fine. So, yeah. Oh, and also, one more thing I want to mention. I am... So glad that the price of insulin was lowered because back then, insulin was literally the same cost as liquid gold. So yeah, because you know, for because you know, sadly, pharmaceutical companies like to charge the shit out of people, especially the people who knew, need their products to literally fucking survive. So yeah, that was yeah that yeah that was that's fun. Fucking not, but thankfully it was lowered down, so thankfully, thankfully that happened. So, yeah, thankfully I don't need to worry about having to pay a lot of money in the future. It's probably going to happen anyways if I ever want to get a house, but you know, that's just future and God knows what the future holds. But yeah, anyways, that was it for this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and like for more, and I'll see you all guys later. Peace out, home guards, and goodbye!